Hello everybody, this is Roving Shadow, and I am back with more Quest for Glory. This time with Quest for Glory 5, Dragonfire. Yes, the fifth game of the series. Before I start this up, just want to talk a little bit about it. This was actually the first game of the series that I played. Um, even so, I don't think it's that. It's probably one of the weaker ones of the series. Still a great game. Still a great game. Don't get me wrong with that. But it's quite different from the other games. It's less of a classical point-and-click adventure strategy type of game with some RPG elements to more of an RPG, an action RPG with some adventure elements now. Sort of changed a little bit, but it's still a really great game. It would probably be my least favorite if it wasn't the first game of the series that I played, the one that got me into it, so it sort of has some, um, I don't know, sentimental value, I guess. But, yeah, so... I'll start up the introduction, which now it actually has a full-out introduction, which is pretty neat. It, I mean, some of the others have had semi-introductions, but this is an actual true introduction. Um, so let's, let's get started with that, and I will try to keep quiet. I might chime in a few times, but yeah. Silmaria was a peaceful kingdom nestled among a hundred islands until the dragon came. Oh, snap. The beast rose from its ancient lair and plunged the land into chaos. Seven pillars were raised and enchanted with spells from ancient scrolls. The pillars were placed throughout the kingdom as each one rose, the dragon became weaker. This powerful enchantment drove the dragon into its lair. But remember, dragons live a long time, and once angered, they do not forget. So they're like elephants? Years of peace have come and gone, and most have forgotten the dragon's reign of terror. But there are those who do remember. And for one in particular, the past is seen as the key to the kingdom. I have seen a vision that the blood of a murdered man will break the ancient spell and free the dragon from its tomb. Oh no! Oh, that is bad. And as the pillars fall, dark fingers of evil will reach out across the land. King of Silmaria, and I do not have long to live. An assassin has been unleashed to kill me, and an army of evil terrorizes the countryside. Silmaria must have a new leader, and the dragon must be destroyed forever. Only a hero can save the kingdom. I pray one will come in time. introduction, wasn't it? Ah, yes. So, let us get started with the game. Let us play the game, and of course, we will be importing Hector, so he can continue his quest. So let's see, strength I went all the way up, offense, I guess I can up offense and defense, and I guess we can up fatality. Let's see, yeah. 
Don't really need to worry about any of the others. So we'll play and because we just start talking right away, I'm going to keep a little bit quiet. Um, but we will be starting off talking with Erasmus. So great times. So, dear boy, the reason Fenris and I brought you here is this. You are a hero. And so, in the grand tradition of all heroes, you need to go where you are most needed. That happens to be Silmaria at this moment. The former king was assassinated a short while back. We have no idea why this was done or even who did it. Thus, you were summoned. Silmaria needs a new king. And thus, the right of rulership is about to begin. This right will determine the next ruler for the kingdom. We would like you to enter the right of rulership. It is the most likely way to find the villain behind the nefarious deeds going on in Silmaria. If you choose to accept this mission, you will need to go to the Hall of Kings to speak with Logos, the centaur who is in charge of Silmaria right now. You will enjoy Silmaria. I am certain you will meet some old friends and make new ones. This is an interesting city, and these are interesting times. I've arranged for you to stay at the most amusing inn in Silmaria. Would you like to go there now, or are you ready to head into danger? Okay, so we will head to Silmaria first, because that's... We have a lot of stuff to do there, so best to just head there right now. We will be coming back here pretty shortly, so we can then talk to them more, fly around a little bit more, have some fun. Okay, but first, let's, let's start looking at some things. This looks like a wizard's hat. Do you suppose it's magical? Duh. This is Nob Hill, the ritzy section of town. You can hobnob with the nabobs here. Okay, and let's look at the little moon. This hangs suspended in midair. Instead of moonlight, it's a light moon. Ah, uh, yes. This is a very strange area. You have a strong suspicion that magic is involved here. This rock is ignorant that it is igneous. Okay, and this sort of reminds you of a song, like a bridge over quiet waters. Okay. One thing that I do not like that was changed in the game is the controls in that you have either a pointer where you can click, talk, pick up things, run, all in one, and then look. In all the other games you had a run function, a talk function, pick up function. There's a different um, icon for everything. Now it's just in the two. I don't know. I like things to be like separate. Maybe it's just me, but I kind of like how they changed that. Or I kind of don't like how they changed that. But it's okay, I guess. This rock platform is perfect for basking in the sun. Looks like a good place for cats. Judging from the huge paw prints in the sand, it's a favorite spot for a really big kitty. Interesting. I wonder if we will see this really big kitty at some point. Let's look at the Coliseum. This arena is huge and impressive. It obviously holds a lot of sports fans. There's a sign on the arena entrance saying that there will be a combat competition tonight at 8. The doors will open at 6 this evening. Right now, the arena is closed. Okay, well, let's head in. Because we can talk to someone who we've not seen in a while. Right over there. May not look familiar. This looks like announcements for the arena events. It says that there will be a series of combat tournaments to determine the champion of Somaria. There is also a warning that magical spells will not work in the arena. Okay. Let's click on it. Welcome to the Grand Arena of Silmaria. Today's champion, Kokino Pukamiso. Today's challenger, Abdul. Oops, didn't mean to. Okay. 
This banner is firmly attached to the wall to prevent theft. Somebody is not very trusting around here. Wonder why. Yes. The banner provides a touch of color to the drab surroundings. This looks like the banner of Circumference and his half-brother, Circumstances Beyond Our Control. Ah, oh, hilarious. Well, most banners provide a touch of color to the drab surroundings. However, this one reminds you of the banner of Cirrhosis of Deliver. That, that, that is, that is great. Never actually noticed that one before. This banner is particularly attractive. It displays a very fine longsword design. The banner of Surprise. Surprise. And Surprise of the Gomer Pile. Okay. And I think there's one more. Yes. This banner looks like someone used it as a towel. Probably. So now let's look at this lovely looking individual. Ferrari exudes a calculating and pompous nature that grates on your nerves. Yes, it is Senor Ferrari from Razir. Back in the second game. Ah, good to see you again. I, Senor Ferrari, welcome you to the arena of Silmaria. Here we are holding gladiatorial combats each evening for the next few weeks. You may come each evening to witness these displays of man's most brutal nature. It costs but five drachmas to observe the spectacle of combat. If you wish to do more than just observe, you may bet upon the outcome of such battles at the Dead Parrot Inn. However, I observe you're a man of action. Perhaps you would like to participate. There is a prize purse worth winning. Interesting. We may have to find out more about that. First, let's greet As Ferrari. always, it is a pleasure to again be in your company. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Tell us more about the competition. I am hoping to see you compete in this. It will be a pleasure to witness your skills in action. Tell us about the arena. It is a fine place to observe the strengths and frailties of your opponents. I am presuming, of course, that you wish to participate in these barbaric and brutal acts of violence. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Tell us about the betting. The betting board in the dead parrot lists the champion for the week and the challengers for the winner's prize. You may bet ten drachmas or more upon either. The odds will be affected directly by your bet. Okay, and tell us about the prize. If you're a challenger in the competition, you can more than double the amount of your entry fee when you win. If you're a champion, you can triple your entry fee. Knowing your reputation, I assume that that will be easy money for you to earn. You may enter the competition at the betting board in the Dead Parrot, as well as place your bets. Very easy money for us. We shall meet again soon, I hope. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This overweight character reminds you of a eunuch you once met in Razir. Okay, let's talk to him. Let's greet him. What you want? Um, I just wanted to greet you. Um, so, what's your name? I be Adam. Very talkative, I see. Very good. Tell us about the arena. This place to fight or watch fight. Okay, I, I sort of figured that out, but okay. Tell us about the fight. Read board. Board tell fight. Okay, okay. Well, goodbye. Go. Okay, fine. I, I will go. If you're going to be like that. Huh. Okay. Let's continue on through. So let's look at the building. This house looks like it's closed up for the winter. The owners have left it all alone. Lonely, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. This fence looks like it was made from spears. Not a nice thing to try to climb, unfortunately. Okay. And this one. This home obviously has a wealthy owner. You're obviously in the prime real estate location. Okay, and let's look at this lovely building. The Hall of Kings is an impressive sight. This is where the king and his counselors usually meet. Looking for a job? There are s some great bennies for being a king. 
However, as long as the assassin is running around, the job security may not be so good. Eh, I'm, I'm not worried about it. That's, that's nothing. This guard's face shows irritation. It's not a pleasant expression. The guard is watching you with a pugnacious look. He definitely has a bad attitude. Okay, let's, let's talk to him. The guard ignores any attempt at conversation. Oh, friendly, aren't we? You may enter the Hall of Kings now. Oh, okay. I guess we're going into the Hall of Kings. Ah, oh, glorious music. Let's look at these banners. This is the banner of subtlety and grandiloquence, the skills of the diplomat. This is the banner of cooperation and competition, the virtues of sportsmanship. You wonder what this banner means. This is the banner of nobility and pride, the symbol of kings. This looks like the banner of courtesy and civility, the virtues of counsel. You see the banner of peace and harmony, the goal of good government. And let's look at the... This place is a huge amphitheater, obviously designed so that all Samarians could witness decisions made by the king or the king's council. Okay, let's, let's head further on in. Greetings, Prince of Shapir. I am Logos, counselor to rulers and speaker of Samaria. Welcome to the Kingdom of Selmaria. I have heard much of you from your friends Erasmus and Rakish. Ah, it's Greetings, Rakesh. my friend. It is good to know that you are here. This land needs a hero of your abilities. I trust you understand why you were summoned here. The rights of rulership need one more entrant before it can begin. All other competitors are worthy individuals. However, I suspect that these rights will be more dangerous than they are intended. We believe that the one or ones who assassinated the King of Somaria will attempt to make certain the contestant they support will win. You must understand that your life will be in grave danger from the moment you enter the right of rulership. We will be doing everything we can to stop the assassin, but you need to be wary. Hero of the lands of Shapir, Tana, and Mordavia, will you enter the rites of rulership? Of course we will. We're not worried about an assassin or... Okay, so, let's, let's greet Logos. It is an honor to meet you. An honor to meet you as well. Tell us about yourself. I am the speaker of Silmaria. I am the voice of the king and of the people. I will make certain that only the most worthy shall attain the rulership of this kingdom. That is my duty and my honor. Rakish and I have been friends for many years. When the king was assassinated, I contacted him through Erasmus for his wise counsel. Both Rakish and Erasmus mentioned you and spoke of your worthiness. Ah, oh, did they? That's nice of them. Of course we're worthy. What am I talking about? Okay, tell us about these rights. The rights of rulership is a series of quests that will aid Selmaria. Five individuals will compete to complete these quests. The one who accomplishes the most will be judged worthy to become king. To enter these rights, you must first contribute 1,000 drachmas to the rulership fund. What? This can be done at the Bank of Silmaria. Your father, the Sultan of Shapir, was informed of this by myself and my wife, and has contributed 300 drachmas toward your entrance in the rites. Erasmus and I have each deposited another 100 drachmas. Ah. Very nice, Rakesh. And thank you, father. So, that means we still need... 500 more drachmas, though. Oh, man. Where am I gonna get that money? I have no money. Again, all my money from Mordavia seems to be gone. What keeps happening to my stuff as I go from each place? I just seem to just lose it. Ah, who knows? Maybe my backpack, I have some. 
Just none in my pockets. During the rites of rulership, all quests will be announced one at a time. Some rites can be fulfilled by only one person. Other rites cannot end until all contenders accomplish their assignment. A more detailed explanation of the rites will be given when the rites of rulership begin. We await your entry into the contest. All right. So where is this bank? The Bank of Silmaria is located in Town Square. The bank manager will be expecting you and explain the right fund. Okay. And tell us about the Sultan. The Sultan Harun al-Rashid has sent a letter of recommendation about you. He says you would make a most splendid king, to use his words. He also sends you his blessing trusts you will choose the future you wish to fulfill ah uh, yes of course and of course we'd make a splendid king I mean we are a prince after all <laughs> who better to be a king than a prince okay and tell us about Samaria Our kingdom of Samaria consists of the Isle of Marit and the outlying islands in the center of the Med Sea the city of Samaria was built upon the prime port of this island and is a thriving center of trade for the world. Okay, tell us about Marit. Marit is a large volcanic island that is said to have risen when Atlantis fell. It is mostly rock and seashore, rising steeply to the peaks of Mount Draconis. In the caldera of Draconis is the most inaccessible Lake Moray. The entire island of Marit is the base of Mount Draconis. Draconis is too steep to climb. And though there are trails that traverse this island, most of Marit is uninhabited, save for the isolated fishing villages along the coast. Okay, and Lake Moray. Lake Moray rests in the heart of Mount Draconis. It is said to be linked to the sea for it rises and falls with the moods of the tides. However, few have seen the lake other than by magic. Draconis is unclimbable. Interesting. Tell us about Atlantis. Atlantis was a kingdom that sank beneath the sea in a disaster eons ago. It is said that the inhabitants were transformed into tritons and other sea creatures. Tell us about the city. The city of Selmaria is built on various levels. It was designed as a defensible fortress in the days when wars were more common. However, this city has been a center for peace and prosperity for generations. We have had no need for an army and have none. Unfortunately, Marit has been invaded by Hesperian mercenaries. They have taken the outlying fishing villages. We do not have the force to drive them away. When was your island invaded? Two days after the king was assassinated. We do not presume this is a coincidence. However, Silmaria has the resources to withstand the siege and has never in its history fallen to invasion. See, this is why, why you need an army. Even, even if you don't think you need it, you never know what will happen. See, you were unprotected, and then you got attacked, and you couldn't do anything for the villages. Now, if you had an army, you might have been able to protect them. Oh, well. Tell us about there the islands. There are many small islands that surround Marit. They are mostly uninhabited, save by animals and monsters. A few of the larger islands are owned by the individuals that live there. Travel to some of the outer islands has become very dangerous lately. Many fishing boats have not returned, and reports of attacks by tritons and sea monsters are all too common. Tell us about these sea the monsters. The sea is a very dangerous place. There are many fierce creatures that prey upon anyone foolish enough to swim far from shore. And the Tritons. The Tritons are half-human, half-fish people who live under the sea. We have been at peace with their people for generations. We have no idea why they now turn against our fishermen. Okay. Now tell us more about this assassin. The assassin used a poison dagger to kill our king. 
The poison is very deadly and unknown to our healers. Unless an antidote is administered immediately, the victim is dead within a minute. Even with an antidote, unless the victim has a very hearty constitution, he will remain unconscious for weeks. We are trying to learn the exact nature of a poison in order to cure this. The assassin of the king is a man skilled in stealth and the use of a poison dagger. A merchant was also presumed to be killed by the assassin, for his body was found by the docks and he died from the same poison. Oh man, maybe we do have to sort of worry about this assassin. Uh, let's tell about ourselves. You have a wide range of experiences to draw upon from your past. It should serve you well in Silmaria. Of course it should. Well, I suppose we should agree to enter the rites. We will be pleased and proud to have such a worthy hero contesting to become our leader. And farewell, Logos. I shall see you again when the rites of rulership begin. May Taiki, goddess of good fortune, smile upon you. Okay, now let us talk to Rakish. Let us greet It is a pleasure to see you again. I can think of none I would rather have by my side in times of danger than you, dear friend. Ah, thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I am well and fine, my friend. We can speak later of these matters and of old times. You will find me during the day basking in the sunshine near the arena on the other side of Knob Hill from here. Logos and I first met in Thebes when he was a young scholar and I was just earning my warrior rank. I had journeyed there to study the riddles of the Sphinx. I mistook Rakish for a Sphinx when we first met. <laughs> when he contacted me about the assassination and the invasion, I had a bad sense that things were even worse than they appeared. Thus, I came here. Okay, what well, can you tell us about the rights? The rights of rulership are a wise and honorable way to choose a leader. The very quests will strengthen the kingdom and allow Logos to judge who will be worthy enough to be king of Silmaria. Well, I suppose then we can tell Rakish about Arana. You tell how you freed the soul of the wizard of Sarana from the darkness of Avuzol in Mordavia. I sorrow to learn that Irana is truly dead. She was a paladin in all but name and the world has lost a great goodness. I rejoice, though, that her soul is free. Thank you for your words. And let's ask about Silmaria is a lovely city. I have visited Logos here before these tragic occurrences. It reminds me of my homeland, Tarna. You should take some time to explore and enjoy yourself while you are here. Ah, we most definitely will. We most definitely will. Okay, well, farewell. I will see you soon, my friend. Absolutely. And let's look. The white hair in his mane shows that your dear friend Rakish has aged since you last saw him. But he still bears the unmistakable aura of strength and nobility. Logos looks like a dignified and trustworthy centaur. The crest is a symbol of royalty for Samaria. This looks like the symbol of honor and humility, the banner of paladins. This banner represents health and long life, the hopes of the individual. This banner, this is the banner of truth and honesty. This is the banner of courage and valor, the strength of the city guard. This banner shows the symbol of justice and law, the principles of the council. This represents justice tempered by mercy, the virtues of a good lawmaker. This raised area is designed so that the speaker can address everyone in the hall. Okay, now I suppose it's a good time to leave. And I suppose this is also a good time to stop for now. So let us save and yeah can ignore this. I tried recording this before, but for some reason, nothing recorded. But that's okay. So let us
Yes, replace, because we don't need that old one. So what we will be doing next time is we will be mostly just continuing going through Samaria, talking to different people. Um, also, let's see. Do we have... Ah, we do have some money. Oh, we have 200 drachmas. So, really, we only need 300 more. But all that we've actually brought with us are some money, our sword, our magic shield. So, Peter's sword, the shield, chain mail, a tinderbox, and some fruit. All our other stuff is gone. And... I suppose so I don't forget. Let's just equip that. And we have some of our paladin abilities. Heal, honor shield, magic ward. All good stuff. Okay. So, I suppose I will... Let's see. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I want to keep continuing or not. I kind of want to keep continuing, but no. No, this is a good spot to... Good spot to stop at, so I will see you all next time.